Making a wooden coffee mug is not as easy as it looks. Untreated wood will ruin your coffee and food safe finishes are not safe for hot liquids. I attempted this a year ago and failed four times, leading to the most frustrating day I've ever had as a woodworker. I'm also gonna show you how to make this with just one inexpensive tool that you likely have in a junk drawer. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. Life is better when you surround yourself with stuff you've made. I love woodworking and I'm a coffee snob and I've tried to combine the two many times, but have failed. The first time, seven years ago, I learned that resins, even resins made for food, are not safe for hot liquids. And then a year ago, I came up with the perfect solution, but that led to the worst and most expensive day ever in my shop. I'm going to attempt six different looking mugs, and one of them, I'm only gonna use a single tool. And as long as I can get just one mug finished where I can safely drink my morning coffee, then this will be a success. The simple solution, is just to use a metal sleeve and build around it. So I got some of these Yeti knockoffs and some stainless steel whiskey glasses. Using only scraps today. Got two pieces of walnut that I'm gonna glue up together. I got this piece of mahogany that I'm gonna chop up and glue up together. And then I got this piece of walnut, which is rough on all sides. It needs to be planed down. And then we're gonna glue up a blank and then we can start cutting. We're gonna start off with the easy one using the whiskey glasses. I can get two out of here. So I'm gonna cut this in half. And I got this Forstner bit that is the exact size of the glass. Glass? What, 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 what? that's not a glass. That's not a glass, bro. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what. Uh, stainless. It's, it's the exact size of the stainless. That's why this one is going to be so easy. The other one's a little bit more difficult. I got this chucked up in the drill press. We're gonna slow the speed way down. And we just drill until we drilled enough. Maybe a little faster than that. So that didn't look feel or sound good. There was a lot of chatter. I'm not sure if it's just a cheap bit or if the chuck wasn't in the drill perfectly straight or if it's just because we're going into hard end grain. I'm assuming it's because we're going into hard end grain, but I'm going to chuck this up in the lathe and see if it's a different experience because like, there, there was definitely some run out on there and, and it's possibly it's just my chuck. Hopefully not the drill press, but that bit shouldn't, you can hear that, that bit shouldn't wobble that much. So I'm gonna try it in the lathe and, and see what happens. Maybe, maybe the bit's not straight, I don't know, but um, rule four, I guess. So this is a completely different process. This time the blank is going to turn and the bit is held still and then I crank the bit into the wood. Ha! I didn't tighten the bit into the... Yeah, just proves that I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm gonna start off with a smaller bit. The chuck is spinning in the lathe. Oh yeah, that is so much better. It's still a little loose, just like the first one. I will say the experience of doing it on the lathe is much quicker and easier than the drill press. I also will say when I roughed out most of the material with my good Forstner bits, it made chips, like actual chips. When I use this cheap bit, it just makes dust. Let's round these off and then move on to the next ones. And just to prove to myself that I don't need a lathe, I'm gonna cut this one out on the bandsaw. Mm. 
Before we finish the two smaller ones, we're gonna catch up with the bigger ones, then we're gonna add the steel inserts, add some grip and some handles to these guys. That Forstner bit wasn't big enough, so now I'm just gonna make it big enough. I decided for the fourth one, I was also gonna cut it out on the bandsaw. So I cut off the sacrificial bottom, and then I'm getting ready to cut out the shape and my bandsaw is not tall enough. So I'm actually just gonna cut off the corners and then finish it off at the disc sander. Now we're just going to epoxy these guys in there. This one slides in a little easier than what I want. And this next one got a nice tight fit. I'm so excited because we are so much further along the process than we were the last time. We have, technically we have four working mugs. We never got to this point last year. So this is kind of exciting. Uh, the two that we made on the lathe, they fit in there perfect. The ones that we used a bit because we had a little bit of wobble in the bits, I gotta fill some cracks with epoxy. So I'm gonna do that now and then we're gonna get to the cool shaping. Oh, gotta make handles. We gotta make handles. All right, epoxy. I am grabbing some sawdust from my sander. I'm gonna mix that in there. It's like some chocolate milk. Nesquik. Nesquik. Oh man, I want some Nesquik right now. That little bunny have a name? I can be real cool. I got a pretty big gap. Like your mom. I got a fill here. Should have masked off the inside. But drive fast, take lots of chances. So now, I'm gonna make a handle for one. Or the big guys, they don't need a handle. Uh, I, they're, it's like uh, I'm drinking my coffee out of this right now. And I don't, I, this doesn't need a handle. The smaller ones, I think do need a handle. And I did not cut this one out on the lathe. And the blank was big enough for me to, when I bandsawed it, I could have cut out the handle shape but I forgot and just cut the handle right off. So we're gonna fix that mistake by just making one. So I got this coffee mug here and I'm just gonna kind of rough this out. I decided to erase it. I want it, I don't like the curve of this. So I think I'm gonna go something a little bit more boxy. So we got a little bit of an issue right here where we got a curved surface and a flat surface. So to get rid of that, little trick, put some adhesive back sandpaper on here. And then I'm just gonna sand this guy. I'm gonna try to put a round over on this tiny little piece here. To reinforce this, I'm going to drill a hole in here and add some dowels. To transfer these holes to the mug, I'm gonna use these little dowel centers on there and then I can get this situated. And look at that, now we know where to draw our holes. Mm. 
and stick our little dowels in there. How you like me now? How do you like me now? A couple years ago, we made this pencil holder and it's got this cool little texture on there. That's what I want to do with most of them and we'll do that here in a second. For this one, I want to try something experimental. Might not work, not real sure. So on the router, I got a little bit in there and I created this little jig and I just want to create a bunch of random lines, maybe various depths. Definitely not trying to space them apart. We're just going to do this willy nilly. May work, may not. Who knows? So let's let's just see what happens here. I did have this board clamped on the side to help me guide it through, but it was still twisting. So we just got rid of it and we're just going willy-nilly. It still wants to move a little bit, but I'm okay with that. It's almost got like a wood texture. We're making wood look like wood. So I'm twisting it as I'm pushing it through and getting some really cool like little cross grain there. I'm really surprised on how much I love this texture. I thought, ah, this would just be random and cool. It's really random and cool. So before we carve out a texture on this one, I wanna add a little skull and crossbones on there. So I've got this white dyed veneer that we're gonna cut out here on the Rayjet R400. This is going to look so cool. Just gonna use some regular old wood glue to glue this down. That's going to look so cool. It looks so cool just behind the tape. We'll let that sit and dry for a little bit before carving out that texture. This one's gonna be one of the more simple ones. We're gonna create a bunch of little divots on there like a golf ball. Look at that, pretty random. We're gonna try something different with the next one. We've got three different textures. I know once I get them sanded smooth and get some finish on there, oh, they're gonna look so freaking good. On this last one with the skull, I'm gonna try some divots. I'm gonna try some big divots and then surround it with little divots. And man, my hand, like this thing, I think this is called the, the Fordham and it's hanging from up here. This is, it's like a Dremel, but on steroids and works so much better than a Dremel and accepts different size bits and stuff. But my hand is cramping up. It takes, it, uh, th this hand is already pretty strong for various reasons. It's gonna be really strong after today. So uh, look out. All right, so Let's take the tape off of here and start working around that skull. While I'm carving in this texture, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for my website for over 10 years now. I can't believe my website 
is over 10 years old. Squarespace makes my life so much easier. Squarespace can make your life so much easier. Whether you're a maker, a woodworker, an artist, a crafter, a coffee mug maker, Squarespace is the perfect place to host your website. You can sell both digital and physical items, which is what I do. You could sell your coffee mugs. You could sell your crafts. Maybe you're just looking for a place to show off your work. They have beautiful image galleries to get you started. Their templates? award-winning. I'm using one of their templates. It just, again, it just makes my life so much easier. I'm gonna have to try this out. They just dropped a new feature. They now have courses. So if you're a teacher, you can now make and host your own courses. This is something I've been thinking about doing for a long time. I've run out of excuses. So thank you Squarespace for kicking me in the behind. Now you gotta do it. Now I gotta make a course, yeah. What should I make a course on? Woodworking, dude. Woodworking. Visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Look for my new woodworking course on my Squarespace site in 2024. Thank you, Squarespace. Let's get back to carving these mugs. In woodworking, there's always more than one way to do something, and I wanna show you a comically simple way to do this with just a utility knife. So I have some veneer, I'm not sure what this is, Coco Bolo maybe, but some sort of exotic, and I'm just gonna cut it down to size here. This veneer is so beautiful, it might end up being my favorite one. I'm gonna tape these two guys together, so I got a perfect seam right here. To attach it, I'm just gonna use some contact cement, some 3M high strength spray adhesive would also work. The trick with the contact cement is to brush it on both pieces, let it set up and get tacky. I had two more stainless steel whiskey glasses, which I did the exact same thing. Can't let you see my junk. So for this finish, we're gonna use tongue oil, and then, which is all natural, and then this citrus solvent, which is, smell that. That smells so good, dude. Let them smell. Smell that. Oh. Uh, you smell it? Uh, yeah, it smells like citrus. Yeah, it's just oranges. Uh, it's a natural way to thin tongue oil. Smells good. Technically, the outside of this doesn't have to be food safe. Technically, all finishes are food safe once fully cured. It's complicated. We're not gonna get into it right now. Basically, that was a seven year journey. When I started this project, I just wanted to end up with one. I actually ended up with seven. I used tongue oil for most of them, so it's gonna take a couple more weeks for that to cure. That's just how tongue oil is. We got the veneer Yeti style coffee mug here. The only tool we needed for that was the utility knife. Then we got the veneered whiskey glasses. And since they don't have handles, I will probably keep them as whiskey glasses. And then we got this one here. I think this one ended up being my favorite because of the handle. I didn't think I was gonna like the handle, but I really love the handle. It just feels really good. Since this was one of the whiskey glasses, it doesn't have a lid. So this will be my in the house coffee mug, the skull one is gonna go to brother Dan. And then we got the Yeti style mahogany one with the lines. And then the walnut Yeti style with the divots. This one is gonna be my shop one because it has the lid. You can watch the seven year old video if you want to, although I don't think that you should. You should watch the video that I made a year ago where I tried this and then every tool that I use broke. It was just, it was the absolute worst day in the shop. Some of it was my fault. Some of it was just by chance. What a day.